Hey guys, how's it going? Comparing here. So, uh, basically the best news possible. Uh, we start hearing some stuff about the upcoming Hearthstone expansion. It's, uh, Black Rock Mountain. It's called Hearthstone Adventure. Basically, it's like the Nax Adventure. If you guys see the screen here, it's, it's, it's basically Nax. I mean, if you, if you look at the Nax screen released what, just before Nax was, uh, uh, announced all that kind of stuff. It's it's exactly the same thing. You you pay for PVE content and you get a bunch of cards and all that stuff. And I'm going to re review some of those cards that were announced at PAX, and some of the details uh, going on about the expansion, as well as some pretty cool exclusive crypt stuff questions to Blizzard. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. So. What is expansion about? Well, uh, at PAX they release some of the bosses. So in the first wing you'll get to face the Grim Guzzler, you get to go to the arena, and you get the Dark Iron Emperor, that kind of stuff. So if you guys don't know about this stuff in World of Warcraft, there was an instance called Black Rock. There was a Lower Black Rock and Upper Black Rock Spire, and both of those were uh, awesome. And then there was, oh, oh man, I forget. There was another one. Okay. All that stuff was really awesome. It was like with lava, with Ragnarosi stuff, and you guys can tell some of that stuff from the... Um, uh, the new arena that we get, you get to see Bragnaros' hammer in the top left, you get the lava stuff, you guys get it. It's basically dark irony stuff. So that's what we're getting, so we're getting some pretty cool stuff. Oh, and dragons, there's dragons, I forgot about that. So you guys have been seeing some of the card backs. Um, if you finish season uh, 20 or, uh, or better, you get the season's card back. If you beat heroic after you buy the stuff with gold or monies, you get the heroic card back. And if you pre-order, you get the exclusive pre-order card back. So that's what's going on with that. Now, there's a lot of cool stuff involved in this expansion. Um, the pre-order, uh, so you can like pre-purchase the stuff if you want, opens up on March 19th. And uh, there's going to be a simultaneous release for everything. So they say for PC, for Mac, for iPad, for Android. All the stuff will be released all the same time next month. Next month is April. And that's the month that I said that they will release the next expansion in, in my uh, expansion prediction video, which I also analyzed some of the dates and stuff like that. And I thought Blizzard would get their ass moving and pump out expansions faster. And they did. They actually announced Nax Ramus 102 days before Nax was actually released. And given the fact that we know the date today and the last day of April, the maximum of time that it will take to release expansion is 55 days. So Blizzard is in fact getting their shit together and pumping out expansions super quick, at least at an accelerated rate, which is absolutely awesome. Now, I can offer you guys some pretty cool stuff in regard to this expansion. I haven't talked about this uh, previously because, well, I couldn't, but now I can. So what's going on? So uh, sometime, I believe it, it's on the 20th of March, I'm going to the European Hearthstone Summit to meet up with some Blizzard peoples in France, and I'll get to like interview the devs and that kind of stuff, and I'll be able to ask them questions. And well, there's now a lot of questions to ask because there's, uh, there's, there's BlackRock. So, so yeah, we can ask questions about that. So I can get some questions for you guys. Um, the deadline is going to be March 12th. So it's only a few days from now. If you guys want to go to the Crypt Forum, yes, that's a thing. It's in the description below. You guys can check that out and see all the goodness. And among the goodness, you guys can use the, the link to the thread, which I've included again in the description below, to post questions that you'd like me to ask Blizzard for you. So yeah, uh, I can't promise that I'll be able to ask all of them in the thread, but I'll try my best. I'll pick the more interesting ones. And on top of that, it's important to note that Blizzard is Blizzard. They'll probably find some way to not answer a lot of the questions. So yeah, I'll do my best. They'll do their best. And I promise. So what's the cards about? There's going to be 31 new cards, just roughly how many was released in Next Ramus. This is basically like Next Ramus, which is really awesome because I actually thought Nax Ramus was the best overall expansion Hearthstone got. Even though GVG had a lot more cards, Nax Ramus had the PvE content, which like which blew my mind at the time, and still really does. There's so many cool, so many amazing things you can do in Hearthstone, and I'm glad they're going for exactly that. So among the 31 cards, they have announced uh, five of them. They've shown them at PAX, and I thought I'd review them for you guys, tell you guys what's going on. And this is this is a little bit more relevant than GVG. With GVG, I'd go over like the first 10 cards. They mean absolutely nothing because they'd release so many more. But here with only 31, going over five is, is somewhat of a decent deal. So the first one they, they released here is a Dark Iron Skulker. It's five for a four, three in Battlecraft deals, two damage to all undamaged enemy minions. All undamaged enemy minions. 
So uh, yeah, it's basically way, way better than Stormpike Commando. And you guys probably think Stormpike Commando is a giant piece of crap. Well, it kind of is, but when it comes to Arena, he's fairly decent. And considering that Dark Iron Skulker is just an unbelievably better version of that, well, the card's really good. It's like super, super good. Yeah, four, three stats for five isn't the greatest, but I mean, if you do damage to two things, it's like better than Bomb Lobber, basically. Most of the time, kind of. And uh, one thing that you guys need to understand is like, from my experience, it seems that Hearthstone, after people realize what's going on, people start playing aggressive stuff on ladder. It's all aggro. It's rush, 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 rush. And this card stops that pretty effectively. So because of that, I think it's going to be an extremely popular, very played card. Maybe not at the start of the expansion, but after a little while, it's going to be the case. The next one on the list is the Blackwing Technician. It's 3 for a 2-4. Battlecry, if you're holding a dragon, gain plus 1, plus 1. And holding a dragon basically means if you, if you have one. If you have one in hand, I guess. Okay, uh, so it's 3 for a 2 4, which is not really the worst stats, but it's a common, so you're going to get a lot of these in Arena, and there are some dragons to get in Arena as well. They're, they're surely going to add some dragons to the set. In fact, there's going to be one of the upcoming card here in a second. So it is going to be somewhat of a realistic thing, and in Construct, you can combo the card, and I feel that 3 for 3 5 stats is actually good enough for Constructed if you can get the dragons consistent enough. So that's kind of the big if. So if that happens, we will see some of these in Constructed, perhaps. But in Arena, if dragons are common enough, and they might be, I think this will see a decent amount of play. There's certainly way worse cards in, in Arena that you can get for, for the common slot. So the dragon, we got the Hungry Dragon. It's 4 for a 5-6, which is uh, basically as good as any other 4-drop in terms of stats, and it has the battle card to summon a random 1-cost minion for your opponent. So. Yeah, this is really broken. Um, it's especially broken in Priest because in Priest, especially in Arena, all you really want to do is have the biggest minion on the board. So if, if this is like bigger than therefore drop, then you just steamroll out of control. And uh, this really, really helps you do that. And the battle cry, it might seem negative, but as with most things in Hearthstone, things that look negative are often positive. In fact, very positive. In fact, really, really, really positive in some cases. So what do I mean? Well, let's say you have uh, played a Raging Worgen on turn 3 and you need to enrage him. Well, what you can do is on turn 4 you can play this guy, then enrage your Worgen, then proceed to own your opponent's face or kill another minion. So you can use it in, in enrage mechanics and also one thing I used to do, I used to play like Leroy just, just because it spawned minions for my opponent. So I could combo him with mind control tech because a lot of people in arena actually play around mind control tech and he constructed it's just kind of hard for some classes to actually play at four minions. So this card helps that. It just puts crap on the board on their side. So if they have like three creatures, well it's it's hungry dragon, mind control tech combo time. So it makes that card much more play. And again, just because people usually gravitate to, towards aggressive decks. Making it so you could use him against control decks with this card combo makes it absolutely incredible. Oh, and it's a dragon. So it's really good at that because it probably needs a lot of dragons for your dragon synergy. So probably a lot of people are going to play this card and it's going to be really awesome because all the random Sir X cost type of effects just are pretty cool. I mean, the Shredders and GVG are probably some of the coolest cards in it. Now, next card up is the Grim Patron. It's, it's 5 for a 3 3. Whenever this minion survives damage, summon another one of that. Um, so, this is interesting. I feel like it's a little bit too techy. It's kind of hard to really pull off. Um, yeah, I mean, if they have a two attack minion, which are probably not very common, yeah. I guess it can get a little bit out of control. If you play the dragon that I just talked about, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can maybe do some combos because there's. Are there any one drops of three attack? No, I don't think so. So yeah, you, you can combo him a little bit, but um, there is some secret super special tech that you might see probably in Arena, but I don't know. I'm sure I'll make a constructed deck to try to make it happen. Um, I believe this card uh, synergizes perfectly with the bombers, and I'm not joking, okay? So the bomber effects I think trigger during the effect of the bomber. Now it doesn't have to do with like damage. So if you like kill something like like a harvest golem with a bomber, it won't spawn the thing because it, those things have to resolve at the end. But like in between effects seem to occur because if you use like uh, like a gurubashi or something like that, 
that just gets bigger and bigger every time it's damaged, it will actually get bigger each time the bomb goes off. So I believe if you play Grim Patron and then Matter Bomber, there's actually a chance that you'll copy your Grim Patron five more times on the board if you get lucky enough Matter Bombs. Isn't that sick? Otherwise, I think the card kind of sucks. All right. Well, the last card on the list is a Legendary. Kind of cool. Uh, Ren Black Hand, he's one of the bosses in, uh, I don't know, I think Upper Black Rock. I don't remember. I haven't played WoW in a while, guys. I'm sorry. So 7 for an 8-4 is kind of crap stats because Ford basically dies to everything. His battle cry is really cool. If you're holding a dragon, destroy a legendary minion. So he basically kill legendaries. But again, um, if a lot of people are playing aggressive decks where they don't have legendaries, this card is absolute trash. And I think while it might be like a meta call, maybe in tournaments, maybe in the early stages of the expansion, it might be super sweet. But I think in the later stages, it might be super trash. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see just kind of what people play after these cards are introduced. But one thing that's really important is a lot of these effects have to do with dragons. And we haven't really seen many of the cards. So um, what that really means, because they're not adding that many cards. I mean, there's so many cards in her song. It's like hundreds, hundreds of cards. They're adding 31. You know, how many dragons could they possibly add? Well, not that many. So how many dragons are there in the game right now? Because you'll probably have to use some of them to augment the cards added to actually make dragon-themed decks. So we have a bunch of legendary minions like Ysera and Ysera lookalikes and that kind of crap and you can't really use any of them very well, but maybe you could stick one in your deck. So those, those are not really the ones that we really want to talk about. The other ones that we want to talk about are, there, there's three of them. So all three kind of see some use, but primarily it's Azure Drake. So Azure Drake is five for uh, four, four spell damage and draw a card. It's super OP, but it's kind of slow. So if you're playing in the aggro e meta, it might be a little bit difficult to pull off. Then you have uh, Twilight Drake. A lot of Warlock decks play this because they can draw extra cards. So I'd imagine Warlock Dragon themed decks will still play this card, though the others probably will think twice. Now the other, the third dragon that um, did see some play in the earlier stage of the Hearthstone, uh, before Nax, before uh, GVG, People actually ran Fairy Dragon in their deck, and Fairy Dragon is a very interesting dragon because some of the dragon-themed cards that you guys have already seen, uh, already had me talk about, can be played aggressively, can be played in aggressive decks. So you can't really play as your Drake in an aggressive deck most of the time. I mean, you can kind of in like Meiji stuff, but not really in anything else. You can't really play Twilight Drake, but Fairy Dragon might actually be significantly improved enough that we'll see it in a lot of decks. Uh, because, yeah, it's just it's just solid. Two drop. Can't be targeted by spells. That's good enough. It'll get some hits in, get some damage. It'll trade pretty well. And, I mean, if you really want, you can hold it for the hold effects. Yeah. So we might also see some new mechanics. Like, the, the hold mechanic is like a new mechanic. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've already seen great things. I expect even greater things. And I'm so happy it's a PvE expansion. PvE expansion and Hearthstones are going to be so amazing. I mean, I really saw it happen in Nax, and I mean, I trust the, the Hearthstone devs. They're, they're going to do a better job than they did the last time, just about every single time. So expect great things. Oh my god, it's so awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.